Hello everyone and welcome to today's video where I'm going over what I believe to be the top 5 cars that everybody on iRacing should consider taking for a test drive if you haven't already. The reasons for picking these particular cars is not down to how they race or how generally popular they are, but purely down to how much fun they are to jump in and send around a track for more than just a couple of laps. When it comes to iconic race cars from the 20th century, the Audi 90 GTO may not be the most iconic. Still, you'd struggle to find many motorsport diehards who haven't seen the incredible history and presence that the Audi Quattro brand holds. The Audi 90 GTO is an all-wheel drive, fire-breathing monster that drives even better than it sounds, which is saying a lot when you hear the turbo chirp. To drive, this is a very physical car, and even on the sim. Full use of the clutch is needed, and with no electronic throttle cut on upshifts or electronic blip on the downshifts, this car will keep you on both your heels and toes. The all-wheel drive system does mean the car does have a natural tendency to understeer. Still, with a slow-in, fast-out approach, this also allows for some massive four-wheel drifts that are very easy to recover and leave you feeling like hands stuck in no time at all. This car is incredibly rewarding when you piece it all together and is something that, although it doesn't get many official races outside of dedicated soft splits, is a car that should be in everyone's shopping carts. To change things dramatically regarding the car's age, we move to the United States with the Dallara IR18 IndyCar, which is just phenomenal to drive. I will always debate this car has the best force feedback feel of any car on iRacing right now. It is genuinely a monster to drive with its lack of power steering, limited aero, and a boot full of power underneath your right foot. The IndyCar has a reworked tyre model as of the 2021 Season 4 build, which allows the car to operate at a slightly higher slip angle around the corners. This means it just got a whole heap more fun. You truly have to wrestle this car around the track. Still, at the same time, it has a fantastic ability to be forgiving to a certain extent as well. You really can throw so much more at this car than you may otherwise expect. The car is known for its oval racing abilities, but I would argue the car should be better known for its road racing ability. It is bonkers to drive at the limit, and with push to pass capabilities, the racing is just as bonkers too. When you first get your iRacing subscription, you can access several free vehicles to play around with. I thought it'd only be fair if I chose one of those free cars to be on this list for those just starting their iRacing careers. I don't think there is any other car in the selection more fun than the Legends 34 Coupe when it comes to free content. It is worth noting off the bat that this is an oval vehicle, but don't be put off because you throw this 1250cc Yamaha powered roll cage on wheels around a road course and you'll be having fun every step of the way. This is a great pack racing car with a potent slipstream effect and limited power which means you end up with crazy close finishes every single time. Even to drive solo around the track though, this car is very entertaining as you battle how to get best around the corners as keeping momentum up is vital at every single stage of the corner. It does get thrown around a little bit by curbs and being an oval car with stagger belts into it, you will find turning right a lot harder than turning left, meaning a unique and delicate driving style will pay off big time in this bundle of mayhem. When it first hit the iRacing storefront, the McLaren Formula 1 car was hit with a very mixed reception. The car was notoriously difficult to drive and even harder to work out the humongous setup sheet. Fast forward a few years though, and iRacing have reworked the physics of the car and handling entirely to be far more forgiving than it once was. Whether it is more or less realistic than before is up for debate, but what isn't is that this is now a transformed car that is worth sending out for a test drive now. The MP430 features DRS as it should, but the MGUK and MGUH systems have been simplified, meaning you no longer have to perform rocket science mid-race to get the most out of this car. The McLaren is far more stable overall while still providing the driver with a monumental challenge in managing your throttle application out of every corner. Don't let all these simplifications fool you into thinking this is now an easy car to drive though, because it will keep you on your toes in every corner. Still, like the others on the list, when you piece it all together over a lap or even over a race distance, the satisfaction you get is second to none. 
I must confess that the final card on this list comes with a high degree of personal bias. A considerable part of my childhood was spent watching the glorious GT1 cars fighting it out in the FIA World Championship. Although the Maserati MC12 GT1 took my eye the most, the Aston Martin DBR9 on iRacing perfectly encapsulates what this era was all about. This is what happens when V8 supercars meets GT3 racing. These cars are brash, bold, aggressive and most notably, noisy. These cars are very mechanical to drive and indeed a joy, especially if you can replicate the driving experience with a sequential shifter. Wide rear tyres allows you to tack the car on exit, but with trash control available to save you if you get a little bit too eager with your right foot, this car does reward a delicate touch on both pedals. No ABS makes life tricky in the high braking zones, but seriously, I cannot vouch for driving this car enough. It is incredible, and with GT unfortunately falling by the wayside, maybe you can pay homage to the category by exploring where GTE's roots all started, right here in the GT1 class.